Marietta Mahani, and this week's muscle conditioning tip and pelvic floor safe tip is using a Swiss ball, a couple of dumbbells, and we're going to be focusing on upper body. So what we're going to be doing is a lateral raise. We're going to be working through the shoulders and lifting the weights out to the side. So starting by sitting up really tall on the ball, walk your feet forward slightly so you're just sitting so that you're like sitting about 12 o'clock on top of the ball. You want your knees above your ankles. And if you've got a slippery floor, like a wooden floor or a tile floor, make sure that you have a yoga mat. So I'm going to turn around and face you in a moment. But you want to have that sort of posture. So chin in, lifting up with the crown of the head, lengthen out to the back of the neck, and you want to have a small arch in your lower back, not an excessive one. So if you've got clients that are not really quite sure where that is, I get them to tilt forwards and back, and then come to their halfway point. Whereas someone who I truly admire, Anna Louise Bourvier, she's a women's health physio in Sydney, I think she's amazing. She talks about a wok, imagine that your pelvis is like a wok, you know, the wok that you fry stuff in, and think about keeping the water in the wok so it doesn't tip out to the front, and it doesn't tip out to the back. So that's a really nice little analogy you can use too. So, starting off, sitting up tall, knees over your ankles, chin in, so if you're lucky you have a bit of a double chin, bend the elbows at 90 degrees, lift the arms out to the side, and then come back down again. So lift up, and then down. Now you can rest your dumbbells on your thighs if you like, or you can keep them by your side so that you're maintaining some load and tension in the shoulders all the time. So what makes this pelvic floor safe? Firstly, we sit up on top of a ball, and that ball's got a curve in it so that you can actually get some kinesthetic awareness with the pelvic floor. So I will ask, I'll cue it. So other than supporting the pelvic floor, cue pelvic floor exercise. So breathe out, lift the pelvic floor, breathe in, let it all relax. Breathe out, lift the pelvic floor, breathe in, let it all relax. And the cool thing about using the Swiss ball when you're doing these pelvic floor exercises is I can actually feel my perineum moving away from the ball and I can feel it relax back down again as I bring my arms down. So from an awareness point of view, it's fantastic. So there's where we'd start. Make sure you pick the appropriate load. If you have clients that have got any shoulder pathology, it's really important that they either pick up lighter weights or they just don't do this exercise, right? So any issues with supraspinatus or any rotator cuff problems, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd choose something else or a much, much lighter weight, if weights at all. Okay, so we've been doing this for a little bit. If you're a group fitness instructor, it's where you'd start. The next thing is to come forwards more. So you're not sitting on 12 o'clock, you're sitting on about 11 o'clock. And shifting your posture will change a lot of things. So just shifting forwards will make you have to work your lower back muscles more to maintain that arch position. You've got to really work hard at pushing the neck in and lift the arms out to the side. Now you'll notice that my arms are bent at approximately 90 degrees and I'm keeping my arms at that angle all the time. So the trick to this is to try and avoid looking like a chicken. This is what I mean by chicken. So often I'll start in this position and then I'll start noticing that my clients are bringing their dumbbells closer and closer to their bodies so that they don't have to lift the load as much but still be lifting the elbows up and down. And now you can understand why I call it a chicken. <laughs> so, Dumbbells here, 90 degrees, up and down. So the dumbbells should finish either next to your thighs or on top of your thighs. Okay, so we've been performing this for a while, we're seeing at 11 o'clock, then you can bring your feet closer together. So you can start with your feet reasonably wide apart, which will help with giving you a wide base of support, making you more stable on the ball. This is probably important if you're working with older adults, but if you are not and you would like to work a little bit harder, or would like to work a bit harder, I should say, bring your feet closer together. So this is probably the third option. So after you've sat on top of the ball, the next option is to move yourself forward so you see at 11 o'clock. Third option is to bring your feet closer together. And then a fourth option is to take one leg forward and lift it up off the floor. Ooh. Now we have to work so much harder with the postural muscles that the weight will feel even heavier in your arms than what it was before. Another option is to keep the leg lifted. Now there's more effort required, especially if that leg is you contract it to hold it in position. I usually do four on one side, then four on the other side, then have a little bit of a break. But you want to be already in that 11 o'clock position for that. 
It's really important because if you've got people doing it at the 12 o'clock position, there's more likely that they'll slouch and it will look like this. And once they slouch, this is so much easier. It requires very little effort to the midsection. And that's where you're supposed to be feeling it. You should be feeling it in your postural muscles, your abdominals, your back muscles, as well as the shoulder muscles. And it also makes the exercise more challenging. So instead of having to go up in weight because you're thinking this is getting too light, go up in challenge as far as how far your feet are away from the floor, how straight is your back, are you able to lift your pelvic floor up and down? You know, consider all the other options rather than going, I need to lift a heavier weight. Yep, you can probably eventually get to that point, but it, you need to get everything else happening. I'm all about technique, and I think most people are too. And if you're a home exercise, you don't have to keep buying more and more dumbbells to try and be able to improve fitness. Just change the challenge on the ball. So, start off by sitting up nice and tall, feet can be wide, come further forwards, but feet wide, so you're sitting at 11 o'clock, feet together, option number two, alternate one leg up off the floor, hold one leg up off the floor while you do it, and then the final option is one arm. So you can start back at the top of the ball again and go one arm and then the other arm, which to a certain degree is a little easier on the shoulders because you're not using both of them at the same time, one arm gets to have a little bit of rest. But it's not until we get to like this sort of action where we're now lifting an alternate leg up. And it can be the opposite leg to the arm or it can be the same arm and leg, which is even harder. So if you go same arm, same side, whoo, this is really challenging now, right? To try and maintain that stability, keeping the chin pulled in, keep the neck lengthened, the whole bit. You can see that I'm beginning to rock from side to side because I'm fatiguing it a little bit. Great upper body workout, excellent for postural awareness and pelvic floor awareness, and that's this week's muscle conditioning and pelvic floor tip.